The concept of participatory politics grows out of work we've been doing for some years around participatory culture. Enough with the distractions. The Hunger Games are real. Check it out. Tens of thousands of undocumented youths lined up around the country yesterday to apply for a program called the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, which President Barack Obama signed into policy on June 15th. We see the hopelessness of a generation that has been broken trying to find its place in this world. We understand that we need to turn anger into action and pain into power. Participatory politics for young people today is often deeply social. It's tied to the ways they construct online communities, the ways they forge identity online. It's integrated into everyday activities. They're actively involved in framing messages, circulating stories, remixing media content. In The Hunger Games, a small portion of the population controls a majority of the wealth. Does The Hunger Games have hot guys in it? Big deal. It also has something else. Us. People who want justice. Over the past five years, the MAP project has been exploring networks which have been particularly innovative and effective at helping young people get more involved in the political process. What we discovered quickly is that storytelling is a kind of core skill for contemporary activism. The ability to translate deep social concerns into compelling narratives which help the public reframe their understanding of those issues. Our goal was 500,000 views for the year and we were gonna reach a million views within like 36 hours. See, wealth is what is valued and value is subjective. What one values depends on one's perspective. The truth is, I try to project my voice but get turned down. The truth is, I have ups and downs. And the truth is, no matter how weak I was back then, I'm only getting stronger. But the truth is, happiness comes again. The truth is, life is what you make out of it. So what we decided to do was do a series of sessions focused on storytelling in political life. How do you find your story? You know, what story is going to be the most appropriate way to encapsulate a set of social concerns? It could well be a real story of a real person's life, but it could also be a fictional story that is being reappropriated and remixed to speak to young people through the language of popular culture. How do you choose the right media platform or media format to convey that story? Is it a story that exists on only a single medium or is it going to be a deeply transmedia experience? How do you circulate that story? Spread it across as many different networks as possible to maximize exposure and draw attention to your effort. And then, once the story starts to circulate, you often lose control. Things happen you didn't anticipate, both positive and negative. And so we're interested in the digital afterlife of those stories uh, and how groups manage and respond to what happens when other people take up their stories and use it to their own ends. Our website wasn't built to maintain 35,000 concurrent viewers at one time. So our website's crashing intermittently. The only thing we could communicate through was Tumblr. So, you know, you're not going to see all the information about every single thing that we do from a Tumblr. And that that was, I think, the beginning of the, the like, conversation turn from this was the greatest thing on the planet to what the hell is this? So we helped to create through our project a series of resources which educators of all kinds can use to communicate to young people about the new civics. Some of that involves bringing together an archive of the products produced by various activist groups. Some of it involves hosting this webinar where we hope teachers and educators will tune in, but we also hope the webinar itself will have its own extended digital afterlife where teachers can use chunks of the discussion to simulate discussion and open up questions for uh, further investigation.